Six years on from the start of the financial crisis and the world remains locked in low interest rates, but is the end nearly in sight? Joining me now is James McCormick from Fitch Ratings. James, we had uh, no change of language from the Fed yesterday, but we had a few new dots. Um, are we getting anywhere near a, a rate rise? I think we're about the same distance we were uh, the day before yesterday in terms of a rate rise. We've been looking for sort of middle of 2015. The market is it's either in the middle of 2015 or maybe Q3 of 2015. I don't think it makes a huge difference. I mean, the issue that the Fed is kind of wrestling with in, in terms of that debate is how strong is the labor market? You know, that's the issue that keeps coming back. How much slack is there in the labor market and how much slack is there in the economy? And I think when they get a better feel for that, we'll be we'll be able to narrow it in a bit more in terms of when that rate rise takes place. I mean, the other recovery that's being it's hard, to, hard to read into is one in the UK. Uh, the US and UK seem to be sort of locked in a battle where who's going to raise first. What, what's your view and, and do you think the UK recovery is for real? We do think it is for real. I mean, there's certainly an element of, the, of a property boom, if not a, a bubble, in, in London itself, but we don't see that nationally. You know, so that, so that is quite London specific. If you look at the overall growth numbers in the UK, they've been quite good. And so our expectation um, has been and still is that, that the Bank of England probably gets there first in terms of a rate rise, but not by much. I mean, the UK and the US are moving in that direction while the Eurozone heads the other way. Uh, I mean, just how bad are things in the Eurozone? And is there anything that Draghi and the rest of the ECB board can do about it? You can't just say it's bad across the board because the weakness that we see in terms of growth performance, unfortunately, is in the biggest economies. It's France and, and Italy that are, that are really struggling in terms of uh, the recent growth numbers and our expectation going forward. The ones that are doing a little bit better are actually the ones that have engaged in, in reforms over the last few years. But it's the smaller economies. It's Spain, it's Portugal, it's, it's, it's Ireland. But when we're looking at um, kind of policy initiatives and policy responses, I think what the ECB is primarily focused on really is not necessarily the growth story, but more the inflation or potential deflation story. So that has to be their focus. On, on deflation, the experts in fighting deflation, or rather failing to fight deflation, are the Bank of Japan. Yeah. Um, they are once again, there's talk about another round of QE sometime later this year or early next. Does that mean that Arbonomics is failing? It's struggling. Um, I think, you know, what, of the three arrows, obviously the most important, I think, from the medium to long term perspective is, has got to be the third, you know, in terms of structural reforms, moving the growth agenda forward. And that's the one that's kind of uh, we've seen the least progress on. In terms of deflation, yeah, the, or inflation now, but potentially moving lower going forward, clearly that's, that's still an issue. I think in order for Japan to really escape um, deflation and to start growing in, in a meaningful way, and meaningful for Japan is maybe 1% or 2%, you're going to have to see real wage increases. And we still have not seen that in terms of real wages. They're falling. China is once again moving up the agenda. We've seen house prices continue to fall, uh, industrial production weakening quite dramatically. Uh, is a hard landing scenario, is that something we're going to start talking about again? Our expectation is for this year we still get in that seven, seven and a half kind of growth range that, uh, that the government has been talking about. Clearly there are some stresses in the property sector. That's related to, you know, the credit growth and the investment boom, the whole growth model, essentially. And when you see the problems in that area, that does make people question the growth model. It is their intention, uh, clearly, to rebalance and to shift over towards consumption, right? This is what everyone talks about. This is what we all know kind of needs to happen in the longer term. If that were to happen, we would be looking at something like what we're seeing now, a slowdown in investment, slowdown in the property sector, weaker credit growth. So it would look very much like this. Not necessarily saying that this has been orchestrated uh, by the authorities, but if the world and the Chinese authorities would, would like an economic rebalancing in China, this is kind of what it would look like. James McCormick, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. And you can read plenty more on all these stories at ft.com forward slash global economy.